I'm going to speak about the topic called avulsion and its management. Avulsion or exarticulation or total luxation is a complete displacement of tooth out of its socket. Avulsion of teeth following traumatic injuries is relatively infrequent. It occurs most often in children from 7 to 9 years of age when permanent incisors are erupting. Maxillary central incisors are most frequently avulsed. What is the etiology? In permanent dentition, it can be mainly seen due to fights and sports injuries. In primary dentition, it may be due to falls against hard objects. Other causes may be unknown or due to contact sports, motor vehicle collision, ice hockey or epileptic seizures. The most common causes for injury may be falls and blows in 69.9% of boys and 86.7% of girls. Sports injuries may be common in boys 18.2% and girls 8.2%. Injuries caused by traffic accidents may be seen in 9.7% of boys and 5.5% of girls. Now what are the clinical findings? Avulsion injuries demonstrates a toothless or empty socket filled with coagulum or even blood. If replanted, it appears loose in its socket. It mostly involves single tooth but multiple avulsions are occasionally encountered. Fractures of alveolar socket wall and injuries to the lips are also most common. In cases where the avuls tooth has to be has been found, radiographs taken are taken only if clinical examinations arouses suspicion of bone fracture. If not found, radiographs are recommended to evaluate extent of dental injury and to rule out complete intrusion and also a fractured root left in the alveolus. Checked X-rays are taken to rule out aspiration of avuls tooth. OPG is used to evaluate foreign bodies, displacement, maxillary and mandibular fractures. Now how do we manage avulsion injuries? The first aid for aval state at the place of accident. First of all, keep the patient calm. Find the tooth and pick it up by the crown. Avoid touching the root. If the tooth is dirty, wash it briefly for maximum 10 seconds under cold running water and reposition it. Try to encourage the patient or guardian to replant the tooth. Once the tooth is back in place, bite on a handkerchief to hold it in position. When replantation of the avulsed tooth is not possible, for example, if it's an unconscious patient, then place the tooth in a glass of milk or any other storage media and bring it with the patient to the emergency clinic. The tooth can be transported in the mouth as well, keeping it in the side of the lip or cheek if the patient is conscious. If the patient is very young, he or she could swallow the tooth. Therefore, it's advised to get the patient spit in a container and place the tooth in it and seek emergency dental care. The choice of treatment is related to the maturity of the root, whether it's open or closed effects and the condition of the periodontal ligament cells. The condition of the cells is depending on the storage media and the time of the mouth, out of the mouth, especially the dry time is critical for the survival of cells. After a dry time of 60 minutes or more, all periodontal ligament cells are non-viable. There are various treatment guidelines for avulsed teeth with closed effects. If the tooth has been replanted prior to coming to the clinic, leave the tooth in place, clean the area with water spray, saline or chlorexidin, suture gingival lacerations if present, verify normal position of the replanted tooth both clinically and radiographically, apply a flexible string for up to two weeks, administer systemic antibiotics, check tetanus protection, give patient instructions, initiate RCT 7 to 10 days after replantation and before splint removal. If the tooth has been kept in storage media and the extraoral time is less than 60 minutes, then clean the tooth with saline, administer local anesthesia, irrigate the socket with saline, examine the alveolar socket, replant the tooth slowly with slight digital pressure, suture gingival lacerations if present, and verify normal position of the replanted tooth both clinically and radiographically. Apply a flexible splint for up to two weeks, keeping it away from the gingiva, administer systemic antibiotics, 
check tetanus protection, give patient instructions and initiate root canal treatment 7 to 10 days after replantation and before splint removal. If the extraoral dry time is longer than 60 minutes, remove attached non-viable soft tissue carefully. Root canal treatment to the tooth can be carried out prior to replantation or later. Stabilize the tooth for 4 weeks using a flexible splint. To slow down osseous replacement of the tooth, treatment of the root surface with fluoride prior to replantation has been suggested using 2% sodium fluoride solution for 20 minutes, but it should not be seen as an absolute recommendation. The treatment guidelines for oval teeth with an open apex. If the tooth has been replanted prior to coming to the clinic, leave the tooth in place, clean the area with water spray, saline or chlorexidin, suture gingival lacerations if present, verify normal position of the replanted tooth both clinically and radiographically, apply a flexible splint for up to two weeks, administer systemic antibiotics, check tetanus protection and give patient instructions. If the tooth has been kept in storage media, extra time is less than 60 minutes, then if contaminated, clean the root surface in a picoforamin with a stream of saline. Topical application of antibiotics has been shown to enhance chances for revascularization of the pulp and can be considered if available. Administer local anesthesia and examine the alveolar socket. Remove the coagulum in the socket and replant the tooth slowly with slight digital pressure. Suture gingival lacerations, especially in the cervical area. Verify normal position of the replanted tooth clinically and radiographically and apply a flexible splint for up to two weeks. Administer systemic antibiotics, check for tetanus protection, and give patient instructions. If the extra will dry time is longer than 60 minutes, Remove attached non-viable soft tissue carefully, for example with gauze. Root canal treatment to the tooth can be carried out prior to replantation or later. Stabilize the tooth for 4 weeks using a flexible splint. To slow down osseous replantation of replacement of the tooth, treatment of the root surface with fluoride prior to replantation again using 2% sodium fluoride solution for 20 minutes has been suggested but it should not be seen as an absolute recommendation. Now the instructions that has to be given to the patients are as follows, avoid participation in contact sports, have soft diet up to 2 weeks, thereafter normal function as soon as possible, brush teeth with a soft toothbrush after each meal, use chlorexidin mouth rinse twice a day for 1 week. Next, these are the endodontic considerations according to IADV guidelines 2012. Now for a teeth with closed apex, if root canal treatment is indicated, the ideal time to begin treatment is 7 to 10 days post replantation. Calcium hydroxide is recommended one month followed by root canal filling with an acceptable material. If the tooth has been dry for more than 60 minutes before replantation, the root canal treatment may be carried out extra orally prior to replantation. Now in cases of two teeth with open apex, Pulp revascularization is possible. For very immature teeth, root canal treatment should be avoided unless there is a clinical or radiographic evidence of pulp necrosis. Now, regarding the follow up procedures, replanted teeth should be monitored by clinical and radiographic control up to 4 weeks, 3 months, 6 months, 1 year, and yearly thereafter. In cases that you can see favorable outcome, closed effects. It may be asymptomatic, there may be normal mobility, normal percussion, sound, no radiographic evidence of resorption or periradicular ostitis, and the lamina dura should appear normal. In case of open apex, it may be asymptomatic, normal mobility, normal percussion sound, radiographic evidence of arrested or continued root formation and eruption, pulp canal obt obliteration is to be expected. In cases of unfavorable outcome, closed effects, it may be symptomatic, excessive mobility or no mobility, with high-pitched percussion sound, and there may be radiographic evidence of resorption. In cases of open effects, it may be symptomatic, excessive mobility can be seen, or no mobility with high-pitched percussion sound, radiographic evidence of resorption, absence of continued tooth formation. Moving on to antibiotics. 
The value of systemic administration of antibiotics in human after replantation is still questionable as clinical studies have not demonstrated its values. Experimental studies have shown that however usually positive effects upon both periodontal and pulpal healing when administered topically. For this reason antibiotics in most situations are recommended after replantation of the teeth. For systemic administration tetracycline is the first choice in appropriate doses for patient age and weight in the first week after replantation. The risk of the discoloration of permanent teeth must be considered before systemic administration of tetracycline in young patients. A penicillin phenoxymethyl penicillin or amoxicillin in an appropriate dose for age and weight in the first week can be given as an alternative to tetracycline. Topical antibiotics like minocycline or doxycycline 1mg per 20 ml of saline for 5 minutes appear experimentally to have a beneficial effect in increasing the chance of pulpal space revascularization and periodontal healing and may be considered in immature teeth. Now moving on to tetanus Refer the patient to a physician for evaluation of the need for a tetanus booster if the avulsed tooth has contacted soil or tetanus coverage is uncertain. Moving on to storage media. Now what is a storage media? It's a physiological solution that closely replicates the oral environment to help preserve the viability of period cells. The ideal storage media should preserve cell vitality, should have adherence and chronogenic capacity. should be readily available and easily accessible at the site of accident it should maintain the vitality of periodontal ligament cells that remain on the root surface it should preserve the majority or the functional capacities of the cells of the periodontal ligament it should produce conditions that closely resemble the original socket environment with adequate osmolality ph nutritional metabolites and glucose and thus create the best possible conditions for storage The container for the transport of avulsed teeth must be unbreakable, non-toxic, leak-proof and ease and of easy handling with internal walls made of soft material, sterile and it must be protect it must protect the tooth during transport. There are various types of storage media that can be used. Uh, there is another seminar which explains about the different types of storage media. I will give the link of that seminar in the description box where so you can find it above. But here I'll just briefly run through the most commonly used storage media. Tap water is one of the most commonly used storage media as it's readily available. It has least desirable results, but yeah. And being hypertonic medium, it causes cellular lysis of the PDL similar to dry storage. Saliva is an immediate interim storage medium. Osmolality is much lower than the physiologic boost harming effects of bacterial contamination and the only advantage is its availability it contains potentially harmful substances such as enzymes bacteria and their byproducts saline solution is compatible to cells of the pdl it lacks essential nutrients such as magnesium calcium and glucose uh, it's used as a storage medium by researchers and it's harmful to pdl in our state if used for longer than 2 hours There are a few other storage media that are commonly used that are Gatorade, contact lens solution, Propolis, Endogain, egg white, milk, Vice Pan, Eagles Medium, Salve extract, coconut water, green tree extract, oral rehydration solution, red mulberry, Punica granatum which is pomegranate juice, two threads cube box. Now another storage media which I want to stress on is Hans Balance Sol solution. It is a standard saline solution widely used in biomedical research to support growth of many cell types. It may be non-toxic, biocompatible with PDL cells. It's composed of sodium chloride, glucose, potassium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, sodium phosphate, potassium phosphate, calcium chloride, magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate. It contains ingredients such as glucose, calcium, magnesium ions which can sustain and reconstitute the depleted cellular components of the periodontal ligament cells. It is a desirable storage media for oral teeth even when the extra alveolar period is extensive that is between 72 to 96 hours. It is commercially available as saver tooth with ideal osmolality and pH. 
what the success of replanted owl's tooth it depends upon the dry extra oral time the elimination of pulp space infection maintaining pulpal vascularity and effective endodontic treatment now what is splinting and what are splints dental splint is a rigid or flexible device or compound used to support protect or immobilize teeth that have been loosened replanted fractured or subjected to certain endodontic surgical procedures the ideal requirements for an acceptable splint are as follows it should have a direct intraoral application it must be easy to construct it does not increase pedial injuries or promote caries it does not irritate oral soft tissues it must be passive it must be rigid semi rigid or flexible splint it should be easy to remove and cause minimal damage to the dentition and it should allow pulp testing and implantic treatment and it must be hygienic and aesthetic these are some uh, splints that are commonly used suture splint arch bar splint composite resin resin splint metal dts splint removable splints intradental wiring now these are the recommendations for splinting type and duration according to IADT guidelines 2012 if it's a subluxation injury flexible splint can be given for 2 weeks if it's an extrusive luxation flexible splint can be given for 2 weeks if it's a lateral luxation flexible splint can be given for 4 weeks if it's an intrusive luxation flexible splint can be given for 4 to 8 weeks and in case of avulsion flexible splint can be given for 2 weeks What are the complications of avulsion? It may lead to tooth loss, phantom roots, or loss of marginal attachment. I would like to conclude my seminar by saying that tooth avulsion results in severance of both the neurovascular bundle and the pedial, causing damage to the alveolar bone, cementum, and gingival tissues. Replantation is an immediate concern to both patient and the clinician. Therefore, the dentist must direct all efforts at preserving the viability of the pedial cells remaining on the root of the owl's tooth and managing the damage to the dental pulp in a timely manner. Thank you.